Half in the bag. Fuck all this stupid popcorn shit. Thank you for your patience. Yes, I'm so sorry you were on hold for that long, but uh, yeah, we, we do Betamax, absolutely. Um, do you happen to know the model number? I, I don't, one second, sir. I, 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 I can't tell you the model number. You would have to know that. Uh, it should be on the bottom. Okay, do you see it? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and yeah, just give me your last name here. Johnson. Okay, can you can you hold on just one second? Mike, what are you doing? Can't you see we're busy? We're busy? What? Yeah, look at all these people. Can I call you back? I'll call you right back. Thank you very much. Hi, how can I help you? Yeah, I have a Magnavox that I need fixed. I think it's like an 82. What seems to be the problem? Well, the picture's all fuzzy. Did you try adjusting the tracking? <laughs> What's tracking? Never mind, just uh, fill out this form here. Just your name and address and phone number and we'll uh, take a look at it for you. I don't support the big pen industry. Jay, are all these people going to a Halloween party or something? No, Mike, they're hipsters. What the fuck is a hipster? It's a person that dresses like a circus clown. Hmm, well the more important question is, why are all these circus clowns getting VCRs fixed? I don't know, I guess it's ironic to watch movies on VHS now. It's good news for us though, cause look, business is booming. I got my oxymorphone. I got my gabapeptin, 50 milligrams. Percocet. My hydrocodone. There it is. Ah, God niblets. Oh, my precious night court tape. <sighs> so many wasted years of my life. <sighs> Wonder how those guys are doing on my VCR. Oh. Uh... You know what? I demand results. I'm gonna find that VCR repair shop. I'm gonna pay those two a visit. Braziers. Next, please. Oh, sorry, we're on our lunch break. You can have a seat in the waiting area. Thanks. All right, this is going great. Yeah, what do you want to do on our lunch break? Hmm, seen any good movies lately? Yeah, and I saw Pain and Gain. I'm Tony Stark. I build neat stuff. I got a great girl. And occasionally, save the world. So why can't I sleep? You elected me on a single platform. I will defend this country at all costs. Iron Man 3 is the first post-Avengers film in the Marvel Films universe. It stars Robert Downey Jr. as an overpaid actor inside of a tin can suit who fights evildoers as the superhero Iron Man 3. His enemies this time include Guy Pearce as an old acquaintance with a grudge, Ben Kingsley as an old man with a beard, and Shane Black as an old-school Hollywood screenwriter with an over-reliance on witty dialogue. Jay, what did you think of the third Iron Man film? I liked the movie a lot. I think this is a movie uh, for everyone. It's a great movie if you enjoy sort of fun, light-hearted uh, popcorn uh, pop entertainment. Uh, and it's also a movie that you can pick apart and find numerous plot holes in if you're a joyless asshole who has nothing better to do with their time. Are you done talking? Was it hard to talk with Roland Emmerich's cock in your mouth? Uh, no, this movie is, I would say this is the best written of the Iron Man movies as far as structure goes. And you can find plot holes or whatever, but in a movie like this, it's not that big of a deal because it's, it's lighthearted. It's uh, more about the characters and the humor. Uh, I, I, yeah, I would say it's a better written movie than the first two. Certainly the second one. The second one hey. Like 
How long have you been here? Like about two and a half hours. Wow, yeah. We've yeah, been yeah, here we've a little been longer. Here for like three hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're in front of me. Oh, yeah. So I like the first two thirds of it a lot. And then it sort of falls apart at the end. It has the problem that we've talked about where uh, they don't know how to end their movie, so there's just a dumb fight. The whole movie, the first movie, the whole thing is he's very slowly and uh, carefully trying to figure out this technology and figuring out how to use it appropriately. And then uh, overnight, Jeff Bridges just makes a giant Iron Man suit and fights him. I agree with you, Jay. I really enjoyed this movie as well. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And while there were some plot things that made me scratch my head. It's a movie where you can't get overly wrapped up in the plot holes because it's meant to be lighthearted. It's a little tongue in cheek and kind of pokes fun at itself a lot, um, especially a lot of the kind of cliches that appear in movies like this. And uh, it, it was witty, witty. Yeah. I think uh, it, it was written by Shane Black who did uh, the Lethal Weapon m movies, movie, I'm not sure. I know he did one of them at least. Uh, is, is he the, the, the uh, low-rent Joss Whedon? He's, well, I wouldn't call him a low-rent Joss Whedon. He's been around a lot longer than Joss Whedon. But this movie uh, especially reminded me of some of the issues I have with Joss Whedon, too, which is that everyone's just a little too clever. Mm. There's a little too much of the, the uh, kind of uh, funny banter. At one point, he runs into a little kid, and you're like, oh, no, the little kid. Yep. And, um there's some really snappy and fun dialogue back and forth between them, and there's one point where the little kid's like, I can help you. And then, you know, you've seen it in movies so many times before where the little kid tags along, yeah. and he's like, yeah, get lost, kid, and he drives <laughs> off. Today is the first day of what's left of your life. Go! Uh, there's very little Iron Man in this Iron Man movie, which is one of the things I liked because it's more about Tony Stark as a character. Mm -hmm. He is Iron Man, and there's some good Iron Man stuff in this, but it's not just, you know, Iron Man fights the bad guy, Iron Man saves someone from a burning building. It's it's a lot more interesting than that. There's a lot more creative and, and different types of sequences. Yeah, there's a lot of different set pieces in this, like action set pieces where it's like, one is, is 12 people get blown out of an airplane at 30,000 feet and Iron Man has to save them. And then there's Tony Stark fighting a crazy lady in a kitchen inside a bar in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And it's like, though it's not just robot versus robot blowing things up, there's lots of variety in the movie. Um, You're just admiring your player there. Yeah, it's top. Top load? Yeah, top load. Where'd That's you get that? Cool. Uh, it's, you probably wouldn't know where it is it's this little hole in the wall oh yeah <sighs> that sounds we awesome. like a lot of those places too and and that's just it just kept you kept refreshing things yeah. over and over again and, that, and it made it interesting well and another nice thing is that there's not too much of it I, I would say that the ending of course you have to have the big action ending I would say that's a little excessive but it was more acceptable because there was so little action throughout the rest of the movie. Yeah. Uh, the action sort of punctuated moments throughout the movie, but it wasn't just like crazy over the top things happening all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets kind of crazy and over the top towards the end, but it feels a little more earned because it's not, uh, the, the, the pace of the movie is not so like breakneck where you just are wore out by the end. I'm gonna offer the choice. Do you want an empty life? a meaningful death. Yeah, so overall, a uh, really good movie. I was thoroughly entertained by it, and it was weird. Weird, uh, there was a There weird was weird story. elements, there was throwbacks to, like it is Shane Black who did Lethal Weapon, and there's a moment where it's almost just like a buddy cop movie. It's just Robert Downey Jr. and Don Cheadle with guns, having uh, fun little dialogue back and yeah, forth. And yeah, it, they, was, it was a nice, simple little moment. And there's lots of nice, simple little moments in this, mm -hmm. uh, surrounded by, of course, the big typical action sequences. Mm -hmm. And that's what has kind of made the other Iron Man movies and this one stand out a little bit as being a little more unique and fun to watch than a lot of these are. Yeah, you know, you know what I thought was unique and fun to watch was Thor. Oh yeah, Thor. Different than Thor, Thor is always Thor. 
Um, this is like, you know, there's Tony Stark and then he's Iron Man, or you have like, there's Bruce Banner and then he becomes the Incredible Hulk. Most of these movies where that's the case, where there's an alter ego, the normal everyday person is completely fucking boring. In these movies, the normal person is far more entertaining than the superhero. Hey, I liked uh, the new Peter Parker, okay? It's, it's, a, it's a tough thing because we talked about this in the uh, Jack and the Giant Beanstalk movie where... Which I don't think you've ever gotten the title of correct. But wh where it's like, okay, it's a big movie. It has to have a giant ending. And I'm watching the ending of this and I'm like, how do these people that made this movie keep track of all this shit? Like all these shots? <laughs> And we watched the end credits. There's oh, that was... 500 million names. As, as funny as this movie was, the funniest part was the end credits when it says visual effects artists. And it's yeah. just rows and rows of names that goes on for 10 minutes. Yeah, and it fills, names fill the entire screen. Literally fills the entire screen. So it's like uh, probably 25,000 visual effects artists. <laughs> and th there are so many people that worked on this movie. It's, it's just mind blowing. But, yeah. but anyways, you get to the end. And it's so complicated, and there's so many things happening, and all these shots, and this fun guy flies, and 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 it's like every movie kind of has to end that way now, it seems. And, and really, like you've seen the trailer, I assume. Um, in the trailer, and this is not spoiler territory, so because they give it away in the trailer, right? Because uh, I was waiting for it the whole movie. In the trailer, they he's like, I got some friends on the way, and then they show one like fifteen thirty. 100 Iron Men, like, all appear, and then, and I kept waiting, when's that moment come up when 100 Iron Men fly into, so it's in the fucking trailer, it's not a spoiler, but at the end of the movie, uh, Tony Stark goes, I'm going to initiate Operation Secret Underground Base under my house that has 150 Iron Man suits in it. Boop. That's the name of the program. Yeah, and you're like, okay, well, why didn't you do that an hour early into the movie when you're trying to fix the broken Iron Man suit? Yeah. Plot hole, fine, whatever. But the end of the movie, a hundred of them come. And it's like, uh, uh, the, the one that he was trying to fix, the busted one, shows up at the end, too. Yeah. And, and I'm like, all I needed was that one. <laughs> that would have been great if, the, if he, he, he has to win the day defeat the villain in the busted old Iron Man suit. But really, we need to have 100 Iron Man explosions going off everywhere in order to fulfill that, that cap, yeah. cap the movie off with the kind of special effects extravaganza that everyone, everyone is expecting. Yeah. Even though the movie is sprinkled with amazing visual effects throughout the whole thing, it needs the big ending. Story-wise, this really didn't. No. And, and that's, that's the problem, the only problem for me. It was it's like, okay, it's, it's, it's an orgy of special effects on the screen, but I really would have liked it because all the way up until then, Tony Stark is this guy who's had his house blown up. He's been cast away in Tennessee. He's forced to build his own Iron Man suit. And then at the end, he goes, a thousand Iron Man suits right here. And you're like, oh. Yeah. Wouldn't it have been great if he just saved the day in a busted ass half working Iron Man suit? <laughs> but that wouldn't have satisfied the 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 numb brains yeah. who shove popcorn in their face. You hear that, Hollywood? We don't need your big dumb endings. We need small dumb endings. So after seeing a genuinely enjoyable movie, we decided to treat ourselves by seeing a Michael Bay film. Yes, we did. Yeah. Hey. Like, jeez, oh what is God. that? Literally a shot glass. <laughs> yeah. My name is Daniel Lugo and I want to make America a better place. If you're willing to do the work, you can have anything. That's what makes the USFA great. You work hard, and what does life serve you? A shame sandwich with a side order of shit. <laughs> Don't be a donter. Do be a doer. Pain and Gain is the Hi, latest like film from film critically acclaimed filmmaker Michael yeah. Bay. I, I'm doing the, the intro. What? I'm trying to do the intro. Intro to what? Pain and gain. Oh, fuck, does it even need an intro? Most of the movie is in focus, and Ed Harris shows up for a little while to remind the audience what it's like to have feelings towards something on screen other than pure hate and depression. 
Mike, what did you think of Pain and Gain? Well, Jay, uh, to say this movie was a nightmare would be an understatement. Yes. Uh, while it wasn't the worst film I've ever seen, uh, it was it was pretty pretty fucking terrible. It wasn't even the worst Michael Bay movie I've seen. Mm. Uh, on a technical level, there's some decent shots in it. There's some creative stuff visually. The problem is. And this is a, it takes a little bit of explaining and is very specific, so I'll yeah. try and do my best to make it uh, understandable to everybody. But uh, here in Milwaukee, there is a morning radio show, and every city has the wacky morning DJs. But this one in particular does a thing every morning where they read local news stories and decide which is the funniest. And by funniest, they mean which people are the stupidest. Mm. But one morning I was listening to them and they were uh, describing a story from the local news about a uh, man who was driving down the interstate at, at completely hammered. This guy was apparently an alcoholic. What an asshole. But he was driving with his small child in the back seat. Cops chased him. Finally, he pulled over and then he just started running from the cops, leaving his small child in the back seat of his car. And the morning, wacky morning DJs were talking about this as if it was the funniest thing in the world. Uh, this guy is just so stupid, the way he left his small child in the car! So, point being, uh, this movie is the equivalent of that. It's taking real misery and suf suffering and stupidity of human nature and saying, Ha ha, look at these stupid people! Don't you think you deserve better? Because I do. Mr. Dobble, are you currently using steroids? I think they messed me up. <laughs> Took a lot of balls to come in here. More like raisinets. At least yours are chocolate-covered raisinets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. So compared to other Michael Bay movies, this wasn't as irritating. But I'll explain what the premise is, because you probably don't know what it is. You see the poster, and it's Mark Wahlberg and The Rock. And they're bodybuilders with weights, and it's called Pain and Gain. Yeah, is what is weight, this? Is this a weightlifting movie? Is it what? You know. But the premise is, in the mid-90s, a bunch of weightlifters in Florida kidnap a guy, try to steal all his money, force him to sign over uh, his assets, his house, to them. And they run this scam, and they have him kidnapped, torture him, all this weird stuff. Eventually, that turns into murder drug addiction, which is handled very tastefully. Oh yeah. In my yeah. opinion. Uh, and uh, you're sitting there watching and you're like, this is a real story. And it, it, it becomes sort of just this fascinating mess of a movie. And you, you could kind of see what he was trying to do, but f failing miserably. Failing miserably is the key word, because I, I think what he was trying to do, I get the impression that Michael Bay is a fan of the Coen brothers, based on the casting of not just this movie, but other movies he's done. Uh, Transformers 3 had Francis McDormand in it. He's used John Turturro a number of times. This movie has Tony Shalhoub and Peter Stormare shows up. All these Coen Brothers regulars. And this movie feels like an attempt to make a Coen Brothers-like movie yeah. made by and for meathead douchebags. I had a wife, two beautiful daughters, a perfect partner. Thank God I left her. Now I'm with seven honeys of which I can choose from. <laughs> People that have no understanding of how to make a movie like that. Because you can make, yes, this is based on a true story, and yes, they turn it into a, I don't even want to call it a dark comedy. I want, uh, this is like a farce. It's like a Three Stooges farce with dramatic music under it. It's yeah. completely baffling. But you can take something that's based on a true story and have sort of a dark, humorous element to it. Sure. You just have to have some sort of wit and intelligence to the, the way you approach the material. Mm -hmm. And Michael Bay is just a tone deaf, uh, overbearing, like everything is just in your face constantly. Everybody's shouting. Every shot is, is crazy. Yeah. It's just too much of everything. It's like an assault. <laughs> Like you said, Coen Brothers influence. You really kind of, I, I, I got the impression that Michael Bay just sat down and watched two movies, uh, Burn After Reading, 
Yeah, a lot of burn after reading in this. Which is, which is um, uh, Brad Pitt, Francis McDormand, who both play dumb people who work in a gym who try to pull off a scam, a criminal scam. And uh, uh, I, I felt a lot of boogie nights because of Mark Wahlberg, because of um, how the, the plot sort of starts speeding up towards the end and becomes crazy. Yeah. You know, the, well, and how crazy things get as a result of cocaine. And, and cocaine, yeah. too. And, uh, uh, well, tone is always a problem in his movies, too, where there's this, like, this juvenile poopy pants humor uh, mixed with more serious stuff, and this movie has that problem. The fuck do you want? What the fuck did you do that for? Okay, I need to read the manual. You I don't, don't figure it out. Need it anymore. Oh, here, you take it. One, Michael Bay couldn't tell the story without without reverting to his his lowbrow mentality. And, yeah, and, basically. And he is worse than Adam Sandler in that regard, where where he laughs at everyone. Yeah. And this movie did not need the lowbrow humor. I, I could have. No. I you could tell this story of of these these uh, weightlifter guys that pull off this this scam or this this crime or whatever they're trying to do in a totally different fashion, but he cannot resist dredging up the, the muck yeah. that that is him <laughs> in a film. And, yeah. and that makes him a terrible, terrible director. Michael's trying to do something extremely different. That was a conversation that we had uh, after I read the script. And, uh, you know, but people will be really surprised at how funny he is and, 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 and how good he is at comedy. So the idea of, of someone like Michael Bay, of all people, taking this true story, this violent story that affected real people in a negative way and turning it into this... Just like you guys have successfully acquired every asset you have. Thanks, buddy. It's all legal and binding, and they're enjoying it. I'm gonna rock your boat. Ninja style. He understands how to keep a movie going visually. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> No, he understands how to keep a mo movie going visually. He understands how to put a movie together visually. Um, albeit, it's like a music video. And that, that was the problem for me, was that there's these moments between characters that are like, okay, this is a character moment. This is, this is dialogue. It's not an action scene. It's not a, like a montage. It's not anything else. But the camera's going like this and every shot's moving, and every shot's moving, and I'm like, stop, lock your camera down. Let, it, let the audience soak in what's happening. They'll get bored, though. That's the thing. Is They'll get bored. He's used to directing Transformers movies, and he can't resist his own, either his own ego or his own juvenile sensibilities. It's the dumb jock in your high school trying to write a poem. <laughs> that's what Pain in Game was. Yeah, yeah, that sounds You know what right. I mean? Like, your, your tits are as big as balloons. I squeeze them, yet they do not pop. Yes. Right? You just summed up Pain in Game, yeah. What's with you clowns? That's that cabbage patch! All right, here's the deal, little fella. I'm gonna headbutt you and knock you out. Do something bad? Maybe a little. They got my toe. You can see the bone. If if the point is to say this rich asshole who hates immigrant workers and who is selfish and greedy, greed is the big thing, right? Yeah. Uh, and we hate him because he has money. Mark Wahlberg is a is a hardworking guy who just strives for the American dream and who ends up so desperate that he wants to steal it from someone else. Though that's, that's the conflict of ideologies in this movie that we're supposed to un understand or sympathize or, or recognize in, in the story. Yeah. Uh, can you make it more dumber? <laughs> <laughs> You ever just get tired of being where you are, Adrian? Yeah. I kind of like it here. I mean, the weight's a new I mean, in life, man. 
You take these real guys, this real situation that did these things where they murdered people, they, they, they stole money from people, they murdered people, they ruined people's lives, and, it's, and they treat it like a Three Stooges routine. That's what this movie is. Yeah. It's the worst possible way to uh, uh, execute this material. Yeah, and, and if Michael Bay is a director, writer, director, whatever. He's, he's not a writer. Okay. He's never written anything. I don't even know if he knows how to read. Michael Bay trying to handle anything other than robots punching each other is just like a joke. You know what? You know what's the hardest part, Jay? What? It's so hard to describe in words how dumb Michael Bay movies are. You sit there and, and you watch it, right? Yeah. And, and there's a scene in this movie the guy that wasn't Mark Wahlberg or The Rock goes into a medical clinic for his, his erectile dysfunction yeah. because of overuse of steroids. Yeah. And the, the, the fat girl from uh, Bridesmaids is there. Yeah. And, uh, and Who wasn't Melissa McCarthy. Who wasn't not, the not Melissa McCarthy girl. She's, she's talking to this black guy and, and, and she's like, I love black men. And he's like, I love fat white bitches. They've just met. And, 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 and the, you're in the guise of a medical environment and she's like, put this shot into your pee pee. And, and it's like, it's like you got, you've been transported back to junior high school. Huh? And, and it's, it makes you want to throw up and you can't describe in words just how dumb the material is. Yeah. And you see people around you laughing and that's that, that, the most baffling part that, to me. That's that, when you feel like you're an alien. That drew me back to when we saw Transformers 2, Two, I think it was. When we were in a packed theater and there's these horrible, horrible, juvenile, stupid jokes happening and people in the theater are laughing. Yeah. And you look around and you feel like you don't belong on this planet. Yeah. I'll try to find a picture of my grandmas and we can show okay. it to them. Maybe they can put, maybe they can put wood paneling on it. So, Speaking of wood paneling, can you Instagram me? Oh, yeah. With this yeah. wood paneling behind me? I wouldn't be holding the VCR. Player. Yeah. That's what this movie made me wish for more than anything, is to just not exist. But just like, I'm gonna look, just, it's kind of like you caught me. Okay. Got it. But the, the, the question is, you have Mark Wahlberg, why is Mark Wahlberg deferring a salary to be in a Michael Bay film? You know, I think what it is, I may be wrong about this, but I think that- well, He lost a bet? I think as the result of being in this movie that Mark Wahlberg is now the lead in Transformers 4. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's the case. Jay, this sounds awfully conspiratorial. But there's a there's a little there's a density to their muscle. There's an animal quality to their muscle um, that I wanted to have, and you know not only that, but it's know. not meant to be a conspiracy. It's just a fact that you know you do a favor for a a uh, high profile Hollywood director, and you end up. It's all come so clear to me now, Hollywood is about money. These people aren't artists. They're just soulless hacks. Mark Wahlberg, for the longest time I've seen him as an artist, ever since Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, and I'm realizing that Mark Wahlberg wants to make millions and millions of dollars. And uh, you know, I thought, wow, to be able to kind of go back and play one of those guys would be really fun. Jay, this is, this is profound. So what you're saying is, Michael Bay is a stupid asshole. <laughs> you doing on the ground? That hurts. Well, it's supposed to hurt. It's called pain and gain, Rusty. Don't be a little bitch. Don't eyeball me, boy. I see your mother driving up and down the street looking at me. I'll be your stepfather by the week. Okay, so uh, you've got a Sony. It looks like a, yeah. what's that, 90? Okay. I mean, get this All right, you two, way. I'm gonna... Yeah, VCRs are, are, are big now. They're... What's going on here? Getting our VCRs fixed. 
This place is the only place in the world that still does it. Oh my God, they're actually fixing VCRs? Yep. Interesting. I have to go now.